Hey, what's up everybody? I'm here in beautiful New Hampshire photographing common loons for two full weeks. I have clients coming in and we're photographing these beautiful birds with their very cute chicks. I uh, just had one hatch uh, yesterday, so I got a one day old chick. It's very, very adorable. In any case, I'm here to talk about the Nikon Z9 and finally, my final thoughts on shooting this camera after I've had it for some time. If you saw my initial video when I put out my initial thoughts, gosh, probably maybe six months ago, something like that. It's been a while. I was hoping to update my thoughts on this camera around the three month mark, but you know, as things usually go, I got insanely busy in spring and just haven't had the time, but I'm still incredibly busy, but I have a few minutes and I wanted to share my thoughts on this camera before it went any longer because they certainly have changed. And as you probably expected, as I expected, and even mentioned in that video, I knew I was probably going to learn to like this camera more and more, and that's exactly what happened. So, uh, as of today, it's the uh, beginning of July right now, 2022. I absolutely love this Nikon Z9. I am running it with firmware version 2.1, which just came out this morning. I haven't had a chance to really shoot with that, but in a little bit of testing I've done around the yard here, I haven't noticed anything majorly different with it. But in any case, improvements are improvements, and I'm always happy about that. Firmware version 2.0 did, however, make a big difference, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But overall, I want to talk about uh, my experience with this camera after shooting it for six months. When I first shared my thoughts on this camera, I definitely liked it, but there was a, a lot of nitpicks and a lot of things where I just wasn't used to it, which is what I fully expected and, and even hopefully mentioned clearly in that video that there was a lot of things I just needed to get used to. And I would say overall, it took me about three months of shooting this camera before I really felt like I kind of knew this camera. Three to four months before I was kind of like, okay, all right, Z9, I got you now. I'm figuring it out, understanding the focus modes and what works, what doesn't, workarounds for different things, and just, you know, shooting a different camera than my previous D4S, which I still have. Anybody want it? Um, but I absolutely love this camera now. Uh, in the initial video, I was shooting my old Nikon 500 F4G lens. Now I am since shooting this, which I love, this Nikon Z100 to 400. And I also have the 400 28 with the built-in teleconverter, amazing lens, which I also did a video on this YouTube channel for. Uh, if you wanna go check that out and hear a little bit more about that lens, wonderful lens, absolutely love it. So what's changed? Well, basically I've learned the camera, you know, I've, I've really gotten comfortable with what it does, what it works, and what doesn't work. And overall, I would say uh, this camera I absolutely love. I would not ever go back to a DSLR at this point. I don't see any advantages with DSLR over these cameras now with the Z9. So um, one of the big things that I lamented in the first video was the focus that gets stuck on the background. So for example, one of the things I do a lot of and I just did a lot of was photographing songbirds, specifically warblers in the forest. Tiny songbirds moving around, bouncing around, what these cameras do, and this is all mirrorless cameras. I was just out during my warbler season for two months straight shooting with all tons of people every day that have every camera out there imaginable, everything ranging from the top of the line Canon, the R3 to Sony's A1, everybody out there with me was experiencing the same problem and that is you go to focus on the bird if you miss with that initial focus grab and it catches the background these mirrorless cameras tend to get locked or feel like they're stuck on the background in the past with the dslr i would take my finger off the focus button in my case i use the shutter button so i take my finger off refocus and it would jump back and try and grab that subject with these mirrorless cameras it does not so has that been fixed with version 2.0 firmware? No, but it has, the workaround has basically solved the problem, right? So the problem still exists and it still exists with this version 2.1 that I just installed this morning. And that is because it's a hardware issue. Everybody in the comments, before you comment, I appreciate your thoughts and your suggestions. It is not a setting. It is not software. It is not firmware in these cameras. It is the way these cameras work. Uh, it's just the way the focus technology works from all these much smarter people than uh, me I've talked to. Uh, it basically is just how mirrorless technology works. And that's fine because now the workaround is finally here in version 2.0 on this Nikon D, uh, I almost said D4S, on this Nikon Z9. And that workaround is... Uh, basically, I just need to get my focus back to my subject really quickly. So what were the options in the past? Well, one of the first things, easiest things to do was grab your manual focus ring, swing it back, closer focus, and then try and grab again. 
simple enough on a small lens like this on the larger lens a little bit more challenging especially if i'm hand holding and my hand doesn't happen to rest right on the focus ring where i'm comfortable holding it so then i gotta fumble around find the focus ring on these new lenses there's like 15 different rings that spin now uh that are you know like different function rings and stuff like that so um, i would easily be missing and hitting other things uh, so that was not a great workaround for me the second option that worked somewhat well is focus on something else. So focus on the ground, focus on a big tree trunk that's close to or in front of your subject and then come back and find them. It works, yes, but you've now taken your subject out of the viewfinder. You have to reacquire them with small songbirds that are moving around quick. That usually means a missed shot unless that's the most cooperative warbler and it's still sitting there. It happens once in a while. Um, and then the last option is on lenses that have the function buttons around them, uh, especially the bigger primes, even my old Nikon 500F4G had that, I could set my focus to really close, so basically minimum focus. I could save that, and then if I missed focus, got stuck in the background, I could then hit one of these function buttons around the lens to bring it back. On a lens like this size that's in my hand right here, even if I'm zoomed out, right, that function button kind of rests right by my hand, how I would normally support the lens. Not too big a deal, but if my hand wasn't just happening to be there, I still had to find it. On the bigger lens, uh, most often I was on a monopod or even if I was hand holding, my hands were not on the button. So I had to take my eye out of the viewfinder, fumble around, find it. Again, it meant a missed shot. It was technically uh, possible and would work great, but in practice and reality, uh, I didn't like it. I fumbled around with it a lot. It, it just was not uh, user friendly for me and the way I shoot. So what changed with the Z9 with firmware version 2.0 and obviously 2.1 now is that they allow me to do that focus recall that I would normally have to press one of these buttons for with a function button on the camera. That was the game changing thing right there. And now, so let's say I go to focus, I miss, hit the background. Instead of like in DSLR days, I would let go of my focus button, press it again to reacquire focus. Instead now I just let go I press the function button. I have it set for function three down here so I can get to it uh, both horizontally and vertically. And so it jumps my focus back to minimum focus, which is where I've already saved it uh, by pressing the function button on the side to save that focus there. And so yeah, miss focus, press function three, it comes back and then I focus again. It's basically just like DSLR. So DSLR was miss focus, let go, focus again. With Z9 or mirrorless cameras, I guess, well, I guess just Z9. I don't know if the other Z cameras have this yet. Uh, but with them, it's just simply miss focus, function three, focus again. That's it. It's that quick. It's that easy. I don't have to take my eye out of the viewfinder. I don't have to find the subject. I don't have to focus on anything else. I don't have to mess with a zoom ring, a focus ring, a, any ring, right? I don't have to mess with any of that stuff. My hand stays ready to shoot. I simply use my uh, one finger down here, tap function three acquire focus again, and I'm good to go. It has basically solved the problem. While the problem still is there, technically, because it's a hardware issue, right? Um, the workaround is so simple, it's not a problem anymore. And that, my friends, has solved the problem for me with the mirrorless cameras. That was the biggest main gripe I had. Other than that, uh, I've been getting really good at figuring out what different focus modes work. Um, and, oh, and, and one more thing about that focus getting stuck on the background. Uh, for anybody that was about to comment on this, no, it is not, I need to use this focus mode or that focus mode. This issue exists with all focus modes. It exists with every camera I've ever been out shooting with other people. They all have the same problem with these tiny birds in the forest. Uh, so again, hold your comments. I appreciate the, the thoughtfulness to try and help, but uh, from my experience, it's just, it's a hardware issue. It's not gonna get solved. Uh, with any software or firmware update or anything like that. But these workarounds do make it a non-existent problem. The one caveat is it only works with the newer Z lenses. So that is a bummer for anybody stuck on an older F-mount lens. That programmable focus uh, button won't work that way. I don't know if that's something Nikon can fix. I hope it is for all of you, um, you know, FTZ adapter users with the F-mount glass because it has made it such a tremendous difference in my songbird photography and basically anytime. It doesn't matter what I'm photographing. If I miss and catch the background, I just hit that button, bring it back, and I'm able to grab it again. So um, other than that, the one other thing I remember talking about in that initial thoughts video that has really changed is this concept of any of these new mirrorless cameras being game 
game changing. You know, I would hear that so much from other photographers switching to these cameras before I got the Z9 is like this, this concept of, you know, oh, I could have never gotten this shot before without this camera and the technology in it, you know? Um, and when I got the Z9 and after shooting it for, I don't know, a few weeks, a month or whatever it was when I put out that first video, I still didn't feel like that. And for the most part, I would say I still don't feel like that, but I'm starting to feel more and more like I can say, hey, this camera is giving me results that maybe I could have gotten in the past with a DSLR, but it's giving them to me way more consistently, way more often, and just way easier, right? So those things are certainly true of this camera. Um, maybe I could have gotten a really difficult flight shot in the past. I'm getting them over and over and over again with this, right? So maybe I would have gotten lucky and gotten one in the past with my own, you know, uh, mediocre skills with birds in flight, but now I'm getting them all the time. So things like that uh, are just so much better. You know, composition, the freedom of composition with the 3D eye tracking is wonderful. Like I said, I've been out with other people shooting the other high-end cameras from both Canon and Sony and some Olympus shooters and stuff like that. And uh, while they're all doing great things with their cameras, and I'm noticing a few times, especially with Canon and Sony, uh, a handful of people I'm working with are mentioning, hey, it's tracking the eye and the Z9's not quite there yet. It's gotta be a little bit closer physically before it starts picking it up. So maybe it's not quite up to par there, but in real world shooting scenarios, I don't really see that big of a difference there. That being said, I haven't shot any of those other cameras, so I can't truly speak to that. I will say I'm very happy with this camera and what it's doing and what it's providing me. So anyway, I was saying, since I'm a little all over the place with this video, uh, the other thing that I mentioned in that initial thoughts were about that game-changing concept. I don't feel like it really is still fully game-changing until I started playing with pre-capture. Yes, I know you Fuji and Olympus folks have had that for years and nobody has given you recognition there. So bummer about that uh, because it's an amazing technology. Uh, for anybody not familiar, that is simply the ability to basically shoot into the past. So uh, while you're simply focusing, half pressing your shutter and focusing and tracking, the camera is taking photos in a rolling buffer. And then after the action happens, you press the shutter button and it saves those photos that were happening in the past. That has allowed me to straight up capture photos I never could have with a DSLR before. So I can now say that this camera is game changing for me. Uh, the limitations are they are JPEG only with the Nikon Z9 currently. So be aware of that. But in my experience, it's totally worth that JPEG file to get these photos that I pretty much could never have gotten with a DSLR. Uh, I've gotten warblers in flight maybe twice with a DS DSLR and it was basically pure luck. With this camera, I've photographed roughly a dozen species this season and basically I can't miss a takeoff shot because I simply watch the bird take off and then I press the shutter and then it saves 120 of those photos every second, you know? So incredible stuff, 120 frames a second for that kind of stuff, absolutely incredible. Um, my normal shooting mode on this, for anybody curious, uh, for, for standard shooting with most things, I'm just using six frames a second. But when you're shooting these songbirds in flight and trying to get them blasting off uh, into the air and doing really cool things, catching insects on the wing and stuff like that. 120 frames a second is pretty badass. Um, the other things I absolutely love, you know, just the 3D tracking on this, uh, the focus, the freedom to compose any way you want that while I would say, you know, with DSLR days, I probably could have gotten those compositions most of the time, way, way, way easier, way more consistent, way more fluid with this. And you know, in the end, I'm probably getting shots I wouldn't have gotten with the DSLR, or at least certainly not as easy, right? So uh, in the end, absolutely love this camera. I highly recommend it. And for now, I can finally say after six months of shooting this camera, the DSLR for me is in the past. Uh, th this mirrorless camera has come into its own and I absolutely love it. Um, just like I'm sure many of you thought and I kind of alluded to in my initial thoughts video a month in that I knew I was gonna just learn this camera more and like it more. Uh, that's exactly what happened. And so yeah, now I absolutely love this Z9. I can't wait to see what else they come out with in firmware updates for this camera. I can't wait to see what else they come out with with new cameras. It's really impressive where all this technology is going and it's a lot of fun to be out there shooting with this stuff. So there you go. Sorry it took me so long to get to this video. Um, I know it's been a, a long time waiting and I should have gotten to it sooner, but 
it's been crazy. I've been out there shooting so much stuff. I have a ton to share. So uh, hopefully I'll be doing that soon. And hopefully shortly after this video comes out, if you check out my Instagram or my website, you'll see a lot of these flight shots. I'm, I'm gonna do about a dozen of them in a row. So you can see some of these Songbird flight shots. In my opinion, just some very, very cool stuff that is very unique and not something I could have really ever captured with a DSLR. So the Z9, loving it. Thanks so much for watching. Happy shooting out there.